Welcome to the Royal National Theatre to join in worship with the Actors' Church Union on this Remembrance Sunday. Remembrance Day is November the 11th, and it's also the feast day of St. Martin, the reluctant soldier who found joy in serving Christ and the needy. After the First World War, the Actors' Church Union took St. Martin as its patron saint. They wanted to join with that spirit of hope of the first Armistice Day. Service and hope are ideals common to the world of theatre and to the way in which human beings try to find meaning in life, even amid the horror of war. Today we remember those who, in numerous wars throughout our history, have forfeited their lives, and especially those who have done so consciously in the pursuit of peace. We remember, too, the theatrical profession, a profession which makes its own distinctive contribution in times of conflict. But much more than this, a profession which is constant in its unique and valuable contribution to our lives, our understanding, our recreation, our growth. Remembrance and thanksgiving are at the heart of the Eucharist as we repeat Christ's actions the night before he was crucified when he took bread and wine, he gave thanks, he gave it to his friends, and he provided a means of grace for future generations. In our act of worship, through the talents of members of the Actors' Church Union and through the insight of theatre, we bring to God different ways in which we respond to the reality of war and the longing for peace and not least in our everyday relationships with each other. And in the service, as in life, discordant beliefs stand side by side. On that first Armistice Day, church bells rang out to celebrate peace. Nowadays, more usually, they summon us to worship. And as they do so, there is an air of expectancy, um, a call to preparation. Very much like the air of expectancy in the theater, moments before the curtain rises. The preparation of our empty space symbolizes the preparation of ourselves, our souls and bodies. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
remember the first time I came here. I was wearing new shoes. They were white with dust. And you know, I flicked them over with my stole before I was received by the bishop. Ah, oh, I was vain and foolish then, ambitious too. I walked on. They were working in the fields and they called me to them. I remember how I used to love to work, but my father said it was unsuitable for one of my birth. I could see my own church in the distance. I was proud, in a humble way. And I thought how much I loved the beauty of this not very beautiful place. I remembered nighttime in the building, the gold lit by the candlelight against the darkness. I thought of you. I remembered you as my friend. Arrested. Yes, sir. I was tired. And I could see beyond the point where my eyes could see cities, castles, mountains, oceans, plateaus, great rivers. And then I, I wanted to tell you this. I do so. Be calm. My son, I... Am I mad? <laughs> no, quite sane. Tell me, what did you do? I created God. I created him. From the light, from the air, from the dust of the road, from the sweat of my hands, from gold, from silk, from the memory of women's faces, from great rivers, from children, from the works of the hands of men, from the past, the present, the future, from the unknown. I forced him to be, from fear and from despair, and in that great act I gathered in everything that I had ever known or seen or experienced. My sin, my presumption, my vanity, my love, my hate, my lust, and at last, I gave myself, and so I made God. And he was magnificent, for he is all of these things. I was utterly in his presence. I, I knelt down by the road. I got out bread and wine. Panem vinum in salutis hostiam. And... In that understanding, he gave himself to me humbly and faithfully as I had given myself to him. You found peace. More. I found meaning. That makes me happy. Oh, my son. I found reason. And that is sanity. I must go now. I must go to worship him in his house, to adore him at his shrine. I must go to church.
Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle, we pray, in the hearts of all the true love of peace, and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your pink kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, the King of glory, who in the making of us bestowed the gift of tears and the sense of joy and implanted in us the need of recreation of mind and body, give to those who minister to that need through drama and music a pure intention and the sense of a great responsibility. And both to them and to those who accept their ministry, give the will to use it so that it may be for the enrichment of human character and for thy greater glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The epistle is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 7. I do not understand what I do, for I don't do what I would like to do, but instead I do what I hate. The Peloponnesian War, 430 BC. In the same winter, the Athenians gave a public funeral for those who had been the first to die in the war. These funerals are held in the following way. Two days before the ceremony, the bones of the fallen are put in a tent and people make whatever offerings they wish to their own dead. Then there's a funeral procession. One empty bier is decorated and carried in the procession. This is for the missing, whose bodies could not be recovered. The bones are laid in the public burial place, which is in the most beautiful quarter outside the city walls. The Battle of Agincourt, 25th of October, 1415. The king went along the ranks to see if nothing was wanting to the work of his army. And he made fine speeches everywhere, exhorting and begging them to do well saying that they should remember that they were born of the realm of England, where they'd been brought up and where their fathers, mothers, wives and children were living. Wherefore it became them to exert themselves that they might return thither with great joy and approval. And in doing that, each one would assist in protecting his person and the crown of England with the honour of the kingdom. The Battle of Trafalgar, October 1805. This comes to you to tell you that I'm alive and hearty except for three fingers, but that's not much. It might have been my head. I told Brother Tom I wanted to see a great battle, and I've seen one. Three of our mess killed and four more of us winged. To tell the truth of it, when the game began, I wished myself at warm Rebecca with my plough again. But I soon set to in good earnest and thought no more of being killed than if I were at Morrow Green Fair. How my fingers got knocked overboard, I don't know. But off they are, and I never missed them till I wanted them. You see, by my writing, it was my left hand, so I can write to you and fight for my king. World War I, 1918. He was hit at four o'clock on the morning of the 24th of March, 1918. When he was hit, he told the men to leave him but they carried him back in a blanket and put him into the hospital train. He died either in the train or at a table where he is buried. Five foot ten of a beautiful young Englishman under French soil. Never a joke, never a look, never a word here to add to my store of memories. The book is shut forever. And as the years pass, I shall remember less and less till he becomes a vague personality, a stereotyped photograph. World War II, 1941. The official notification was waiting for me when I came off duty at midday yesterday. Just the usual sort of thing. It was so brief, it didn't mean anything. Regret to inform you, Private T. Lytton is missing 
believed killed. I know well what that means, I know very well. I know that missing men have come back from the war, but not from Crete. But I can't and don't believe that he's altogether lost to me. I've never been a religious person, but I have a strong faith in individual survival after death. And then, knowing him, oh, no, he, he could never have been just extinguished like a candle. His ideas couldn't be quenched just like that. Tom could only die, not be silenced. The Korean War, 17th of October, 1950. There was a crack of carbines, a burst or two of automatic fire, and a peasant woman crumpled into the ditch by the roadside with her two babes crawling upon her. She lay there, peaceful, seeming only to sleep, but dead. One baby sat on her belly, small hands reaching up to her face, stoking, Pulling at her lips, growing frantic, its screams agonizing. And the other child sat in a kind of torpor of dejection at his dead mother's feet. It smote us all down, reminding us of the unforgettable meaning of war. The Falklands War, 1982. As the soldiers drew nearer to Port Stanley, we allowed ourselves to relax a bit. It seemed clear that the war was almost over. At about 6.30 on the evening of the 13th of June, the telephone rang. It was our daughter-in-law telling us what we'd feared most. Glamorgan hit by an exocet, and David amongst those killed. She was calm, but I was distraught. The day after our boy's death, the Argentines surrendered. One day too late for us, and dozens of others. The Gulf War. 1991. Emeria is in the north of Baghdad. Next to the mosque is a block of concrete, 50 yards wide and 10 feet. There are no windows. Underneath it is a shelter. Each evening since the start of the war, local people would come with their bread and their blankets and their pillows to the, to the bunker. Nothing had ever fallen on Emilia, but people preferred to spend the night there for safety's sake. Last night, there must have been at least 400 people there. The first explosion was at 4.45 in the morning. Two missiles arrived one after the other. They both hit the same spot. When we got there, we saw two children and five adults getting out. Some of them were badly injured. The rest have died. I do not understand what I do, for I don't do what I would like to do, but instead I do what I hate. This is the word of the Lord.
I believe in God the Father, in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, in the Blessed Virgin Mary, in the Holy Ghost, in Adam Cadmium, in Chrome Nickel, the Oxides and the Mercurochromes, in Waterfowls and Watercress, in Epileptoid Seizures, in Bubonic Plagues in Devachen, in planetary conjunctions, in chicken tracks and stick throwing, in revolutions, in stock crashes, in wars, earthquakes, cyclones, in Kali Yuga and in Hula Hula. I believe. I believe. I believe. Because not to believe is to become as lead, to lie prone and rigid, forever inert, to waste away. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. Begotten, not made of one being with the Father. For as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. He has spoken through the prophets. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Your hair. Your hair got so gray. Oh, it's been gray since you were in high school. I just stopped dyeing it, that's all. Dye it again, will ya? I don't want my pal looking old. You're such a boy. You think you can go away for a year and... You've got to make your mind up now. That one day, you'll knock on this door and there'll be strange people here. <laughs> what are you talking about, Mom? You're not even 60. But what about your father? Well, I, I met him too. He admires Pop. Biff, dear, if you don't have any feeling for him, then you can't have any feeling for me. Sure I can. No, Mom. you can't just come back here to see me because I love him. He's the dearest man in the world to me and I won't have anyone making him feel unwanted and low and blue. You've got to make your mind up now, darling. There's no leeway anymore. Either he's your father and you respect him and you pay him that respect or you're not to come here. I know he's not easy to live with. Nobody... Stop making excuses for him. He always, always wiped the floor with you. Never had an ounce of respect for you. He's always respected you. What the hell do you know about it? You don't call him crazy. He's got no character. People are worse off than Willie Loman. Believe me, I've seen him. I don't say he's a great man. Willie Loman never made a lot of money. His name was never in the papers. He's not the finest character that ever lived, but he's a human being. And a terrible thing is happening to him. So, attention must be paid. He's not to be allowed to fall into his grave like an old dog. Attention! Attention must finally be paid to such a person.
Let us thank God for the glory of all his creation and rejoice that he is in all and through all and over all. Let us commend into God's care and love all who have died, especially Eric Matheson, chaplain here at the National Theatre, who died this week. And today we remember with gratitude and penitence those who have died in war of all countries, in every generation, and in particular members of our own profession. Let us pray for the continuing victims of war, the wounded, the deprived, and the bitter, for those who live in grief for the past or in fear for the future. Let us pray for the peace of the world, for those places where violence erupts to mar God's creation, and for the leaders of the nations, that hearts of stone may be turned to hearts of flesh. And since all human beings are valuable to God, let us ask for grace to pray for our enemies, as Jesus told us, for those who make war, for those we find it hard to get along with. Let us pray that no man or woman shall feel unwanted because of our hatred or neglect. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Ah, Faustus. Now is thou but one hour bare left to live, and then thou must be damned perpetually. Stand still, you ever-moving spheres, the time may cease and midnight never come. Vanage as I rise, rise again, and make perpetual day. Or let this hour be but a year, a month, a week, a natural day, that Faustus may repent and save his soul. Or lente, lente, curite noctus equi. The stars move still. Time runs. The clock will strike. And Faustus must be damned. Oh, I'll leap up to my God, who pulls me down. See where Christ's blood streams in the firmament. One drop would save my soul, nay, half a drop. Oh, my Christ, oh, rend not my heart the naming of my Christ. Yet will I call on him. Oh, spare me, spare me, Lucifer. Where is it now? It is gone. And see where God stretcheth out his arms and bends his ireful brow. Mountains and hills, come, come and fall on me, and hide me from the heavy wrath of God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ came and proclaimed the gospel, peace to those who are far off and peace to those who are near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because in his victory over the grave, a new age has dawned. The long reign of sin is ended. A broken world is being renewed and humanity is once again made whole. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, having in remembrance his death once for all upon the cross, his resurrection from the dead, and his ascension into heaven, and looking for the coming of his kingdom, we make with this bread and this cup the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Accept through him this offering of our duty and service. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, 
Fill us with your grace and heavenly blessing. Nourish us with the body and blood of your Son, that we may grow into his likeness, and made one by your Spirit, become a living temple to your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, from all who stand before you in earth and heaven, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
My soul, there is a country far beyond the stars, where stands a winged sentry, all skillful in the wars. There, beyond noise and danger, sweet peace sits crowned with smiles, and one born in a manger commands the beauteous files. He is thy gracious friend, and oh, my soul, awake, did in pure love descend to die here for thy sake. If thou canst get but thither, there grows the flower of peace, the rose that cannot wither, thy fortress and thy ease. Leave then thy foolish ranges, for none can thee secure, but one who never changes, thy God, thy life, thy cure. When our time comes, we shall die submissively. And over there, beyond the grave, we shall say that we've suffered, that we've wept, that we've had a bitter life. And God will take pity on us. And then, Uncle dear, we shall both begin to know a life that is bright and beautiful and lovely. We shall rejoice and look back at these troubles of ours with tender feelings, with a smile. And we shall have rest. I believe it, Uncle. I believe it fervently, passionately. We shall have rest. We shall rest. We shall hear the angels. And we shall see all the heavens covered with stars like diamonds. And we shall see all earthly evil, all our suffering swept away by the grace which will fill the whole world. And then our life will become peaceful gentle and sweet as a caress. I believe it. I believe it. Now is eternal life, if risen with Christ we stand. In him to life reborn, and holden in his hand. No more we fear death's ancient dread, in Christ arisen from the dead. God of peace, fill you with all joy and hope in believing, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. To a troubled world, peace from Christ. To a searching world, love from Christ. To a dying world, hope from Christ.